A. <sighs> Let's get started. <clears throat> Good afternoon and salutations. My name is Calypso, aka Mint Carousel, and welcome to the stream. Today we'll be playing Fatal 12. Alright, so, introductions for Fatal 12. So, uh, I don't know what this game's about. <laughs> Um, I, I, at one, I, I, I believe at one point I did because I think I found this game on like, um, like a, a master list of like games or visual novels that are gay. And so I want, and so something about this caught my eye and I don't know what it is. So hopefully, uh, past Callie was, knew what she was talking about and I trust her. Um, so let's get my headphones on and start whatever this is going to be. Also, it looks like we'll be continuing the Pride Month theme. Yeah. That's cool. Start. Let's go. <coughs> There are a number of terms used to describe a sequence of events that lead to a specific outcome. Some call it life, others call it a story. One is responsible for much during the sequence, such as choices picked, relationships built, and mistakes made. <laughs> All of that is for the sake of proceeding along a predetermined path. Okay, I, I, I will need water for this. Ugh. That is the natural order of a world ruled by the concept of fate. Okay, fatal, fate, yeah. <coughs> fate never strays from its course, regardless of how cruel it may be. Ah. Fatal. My life and the events in it thus far are simply the product of fate leading me to a certain outcome. That's why I've never once given thought to any missed possibilities found along this path. That's an interesting thing to, thing to say about a visual novel. My life has never been anything worth talking about in the first place. I've never had the luxury of considering the what-ifs. <coughs> oh, this is gonna destroy me. After all, I've convinced myself life has no do-overs. Once the story ends, that's it. Oh! That's what we're doing. Okay. This character does get a do-over. That's what that tells me. My name is Shishimae Rinka. I'm a second year at Amecha Girls University High School. A rather famous all-girls school in the big city. Alright, I should have had a Yuri Bingo. That would have checked one off. Uh... Unlike my middle school, which was a hodgepodge of top students and those who barely showed up for class, this is the realm of refined, wealthy ladies. <laughs> Alright. A realm I clearly don't belong in. In fact, they wasted no time in labeling me a delinquent of sorts. Oh! Oh, good! Good, 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 good. <coughs> Excuse me. One reason, really the main reason, is the golden streaks in my hair. Oh? However, it's my natural hair color, so the school itself has no issues with it. Not like I get it hassled for it e I, not, not like I get hassled for it either. It's just a bit too out there for these sheltered students. The main reason I chose Amecha was because it didn't seem to have many regulations in, regard in regards to appearance. It turned out they just didn't list anything due to its unspoken rules based on being a traditional school. <laughs> well, that just seems like they're, uh, not... Prepared? No, prepared is the wrong word. Um... Nah, whatever. I was pretty pissed off when I got treated like a delinquent, despite having not broken any rules at the time. <laughs> Fewer than three months later, I've stopped caring. <sighs> yeah. Much like I, how I have my own values, the girls here have theirs. 
I can't understand their viewpoint, so it's un it's only natural they can't understand mine. To tell the truth, I am pretty content with making no effort to look at life from another's point of view. Eh, so it goes. That is, until a certain event caused a massive change in my life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It all starts on a certain day before Golden Week. Okay, what's, what, what is that? We're not explaining what Golden Week is. Alright. <coughs> Festival? Competition? Hmm. <coughs> huh, the station's clock's not moving. I wonder if it's broken. I will lay my observation to Naomi as we pass through the ticket gate. Uh, oh, you're right. I'm surprised you noticed. It's not often you see something like that happen. Is... Hmm. Menu. Settings? Sound. Voices. Language is in English because... But the voices are going to be in Japanese. So I think... Since we're not going to get them actually talking... And I have to actually read them. I'm going to stop the voice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop the voices. Um, so that we don't have to just... Well... Ah, the voice acting, though. I want to hear it. Never mind. Uh, we'll just have to... Uh, the game will be just slightly longer waiting for them to finish the voice lines. But that's fine. All right. Let me get a drink of water. Oh, you're right. I'm surprised you noticed. It's not often you see something like that happen. Now, no, no. no. Uh, um, I might listen to it on my own time. Oh, shit. Uh... Don't these things have a... Ah, uh, okay. I thought those th these games usually have a um a. Uh... uh, okay. So I'm gonna yeah. I actually don't want to wait for the voice line to. I'll. Probably, like, replay it and listen to it at another time. I'm going to just say, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I seem to have forgotten, too. This is Hitsuji Naomi, a first year at Amicha. <laughs> you might assume that I know her from club activities or something like the student council, but it was coincidence that brought us together. She may be my junior, but I simply see her as a friend, because age difference doesn't matter much to me. We're heading back to my place right now, making our way to the station platform to wait for the train. Oh. Watch it. Wait, hold on. Didn't... Okay, that's not what that does then. Uh... Hmm. I guess there's nothing I can do about that, so... I guess we're stuck with it. Okay, that's fine. Watch it! She yelps as she trips over nothing but air. Fortunately, I snag her hand and keep her from falling on her face. <laughs> well, she tugs me forward in the process because she's a bit taller than me, but she manages to regain her balance quick. Sorry again. No worries. I'm not sure if it's due to her meek nature or not, but Naomi tends to trip herself up pretty often. Oh, okay. 
She's the kind of girl you look at and suddenly feel an inexplicable urge to protect. Ah, alright, yep. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Am I holding her hand? <laughs> Oops, I forgot to let go of her hand after catching her. Classic. Now that we have to hear the voices, hold on. I'm gonna play around with the settings. Oh, sorry, did I hurt you? She casts her eyes downward as she answers. Fucking gay. <laughs> Maybe I squeezed a bit too tight without realizing it? I let go with an apologetic expression. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're gonna do like a watching a subbed anime kind of thing where we literally can all read the dialogue text the, the dialogue text as the voice line's going. And I'll wait just a few seconds, but I'll read the inner thought like we uh Rinka? Uh Rin uh, Rinka's uh, inner thoughts. <coughs> <coughs> Oh god, talking so much is going to destroy me. Actually, do we have... Hey. Right. I'm not sure what... Oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to bring up the Twitch, the stream thing on my phone so I have a... Because I don't really know when I would <laughs> uh, tab out. At what points? Like, Celeste, I could do it, like, at every new screen or something, but here I'm not sure, so there we go. Alright. Uh, but... She fixes her glasses, which had become askew after tripping, and then points toward the platform with haste. Situations like this typically lead to a replay of the events from just a minute ago. <laughs> She bumps right into a passerby the moment she starts to walk toward the platform. <coughs> Even worse, it causes them both to topple over. <coughs> okay, so this is a new character? They left a space open. I make my way over as they get back to their feet. Maybe not? She bumped into... She bumped into what seems to be a young girl. She's about the same height as me, but her face is definitely younger. Sometimes Naomi gets mistaken for a middle schooler thanks to her big round eyes, but that's not the case with this girl. <laughs> uh-huh. I love that beanie though, actually. I notice how pallid her eyes are when I try to speak to her. Her hair is pure white, but mostly obscured by her hat. She's adorable. She definitely looks young, but her facial features stand out more than her, the, your average person's. Safe to assume that she's a foreigner then. That means her hair isn't dyed either. Uh -huh. Unlike Naomi, this girl has fallen backward. Since Naomi bumped into the girl's back, you, you'd you think she would have fallen face first, but she quickly spun around while falling. Not only that, but she also made sure to cradle the bag that was on her back. Huh. Based on its size, I'd guess she's here on vacation. Chances are she's carrying something fragile in there, like a camera. 
she's by herself too, so I'm assuming she came here with her family and has somehow gotten lost. What I think is a key on her bag is, a, is actually just a keychain. Up, up. She hops back to her feet, bag in hand, her glare drilling into me. She seems a bit too panicked to get up on her own, so I lend her my hand once again. She offers nothing beyond an empty stare, as Naomi apologizes and bows her head. She seems like she wants to say something, but for whatever reason, opts not to. Eventually, she runs off toward the platform without making it clear whether or not she understood our apology. <coughs> Ugh. She spins around to face us one more time. But I get the feeling that she's locking eyes with me, not Naomi. Hell yeah, main character perks. It's funny. Thanks to her, her unique appearance, she still stands out in the crowd. Then again, my hair causes me to stand out as well. So that's probably how she spots me so quickly. In the end, I'm not able to tell if she finds her parents or if she actually has come here all alone. Oh my god, we're at a train station. Forgot to read that. Whoops. Alright. <clears throat> That's fine. We make our way onto the train bound for Shinjuku, having largely forgotten about the person Naomi bumped into. I kind of read that as if it was going to continue. We board the next. Well, it is, but. We board the next train at Otsukat Station. My place isn't far from there. We first have to get off at Shinjuku Station before taking the metro for two more stations. Yes! Let's go! Taking the train, public transport, let's fucking go! <clears throat> the only issue is that we're making this journey at 5pm. Pretty much rush hour, so the trains are packed. Ooh. Naomi and I get practically glued together on our journey to Shinjuku.
I spy a fam- oh, whoops. I spy a familiar bag from amongst the crowd. Well, the bag itself is standard, so it's actually the keychain that catches my eye. Yep, it's the kid from earlier. Standing right in the middle of the passenger car. Bag hugged tight against their, ch their chest. Oh, we're sitting there now. They're not tall enough to reach the overhead straps, but I doubt they'll fall over thanks to how crammed it is. The strap is probably unfastened a bit due to people rubbing against it on the train. <coughs> hmm. I'm just worried because the kid doesn't seem to have noticed. The other passengers probably don't care enough to notice either. Some are reading the newspaper, others are killing time by checking out all the ads, but most are on their phones. I doubt I would have noticed if Naomi hadn't bumped into them. And that's why I'm the only one to see what they are doing. With a deadly serious expression. Almost as if they are being squashed by incredible pressure. Uh. Uh. Something black is peeking out of the bag. It looks mechanical, but different from a cat. What the fuck? Oh fuck, wait. Oh shit. But different from a camera or a laptop. <laughs> For whatever reasons, reason my mind leaps to the conclusion that I've only read in fiction. It's a bu Before I can finish, it happens! A flash emits out of the bag. What the fuck? The detonation is almost instantaneous. <laughs> a wave of heat propels throughout the car, enough to feel like my skin is being seared off. Oh, fuck. Okay. A sharp, explosive roar comes right after, puncturing my eardrums. I duck in front of Naomi to protect her, and then push her away. I feel my body being pushed by the explosive shockwave, too. And in that moment... My body is burned beyond repair within the flames. <laughs> what? Hello? However, my consciousness remains intact. I hear a voice. I don't feel anything anymore. Vivid memories pulse through me. The shockwave, the pain, the heat searing through my body. And yet, I no longer feel any of it. My consciousness begins to fade. Or maybe I've already lost it. This is but a remnant of it before it fades away completely. The final fleeting moments of a consciousness drowned in a sea of fire. My sight gradually fades too. No doubt my consciousness will be spirited away like a leaf in a gust of wind. If nothing else, being able to hear that voice puts me at ease. Cool. I'm pretty sure there's no arguing that fate has decided to end my life here and now. Huh.
Oh, wait, opening. Song. That was good. Yeah. I'm into it. I hear two voices calling out to me. I know who they belong to without even seeing their faces. <coughs> oh, okay, I think those gold flakes are important, or maybe they're just something else. A sharp pain rushes through my forehead, causing me to finally lift my face up, uh, face off my arms. No doubt this will sting for a while. <laughs> the one responsible for me waking me up is Oguma Mao, a classmate. As usual, she's got her wildly colored hair tied up nice and neat into pigtails. Beside her is Naomi, and seeing how they're still in their uniforms, I guess we just got back from school. We're at Lion House, a cafe run by my grandmother. The first floor serves as the cafe, while the second floor serves as her home. <coughs> Since I'm living with her, my room is also on the second floor. Although it's probably more accurate to say I'm living on my own right now, considering she's gone off to the countryside to help nurse an ailing relative. <laughs> I was trying to take a drink of water, but absolute legend. <laughs> okay, depending on how I feel about Mao as a character, I would I absolutely say myself referring to her as absolute legend Mao. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see. She clicks her mechanical pencil and presses it against my cheek before scribbling all over me. Naomi is visibly disturbed by how much Mao seems to have enjoyed doing that. <laughs> well, it certainly has helped with to wake me up. A lingering issue, however, is that I can't remember why we're here. <laughs> I 
Do you have a different technique? I can't remember what I even dreamed about. I mentioned a fire when I woke up, but I don't recall being involved in one. The fact that I can't remember is starting to annoy me. <laughs> Naomi interjects after I fire a glare at Mao. She's making no attempt to hide the fact that she's been forced into it. Ah. Granted, she's probably the most fit for the job, considering how serious and thorough she is when it comes to this stuff. Oh! The gold sparkles are around all of them, so I don't think it's- okay, so it's not- uh, specific to, uh, Rinka. Her explanation helps me grasp the, th the, the situation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the store is only open for the regulars right now, since my grandmother's away. Sometimes we get a first-timer or two, but I've only got simple stuff on the menu for now, so I can handle things on my own. It doesn't really get- it doesn't get really busy, so there's no issue when you're inviting her along. <laughs> okay. I like her. Absolute legend, Mao. <laughs> Let's go. This is must be what Golden Week- I don't know if they mentioned their term Golden Week. This is what Golden Week must be. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> or this is part of Golden Week. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yes, weird girl solidarity. Let's go. Right now, Mao is my favorite. <laughs> She nods, struggling to hide her concern. After hearing that, she probably thinks we were being bullied. We're used to how we're treated, though. It's not like they're going out of their way to ignore us. They'd just rather avoid us whenever possible. Gah. It's funny, though. Mao still gets along with plenty of the girls, and I'm pretty sure no one outright dislikes me. It might be more accurate to say they try not to get too involved in our lives. They understand that we're different, so it creates a rift between us. Speaking of different, we're not the only two. Mishima Miharu 
who's probably at work right now, is our com is our comrade in that regard. <laughs> comrade. <laughs> Com comrade Ma. Cafe ole, cafe ole, cafe ole. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, what are you, a communist? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, now. Yay! Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <She's getting kept> <laughs> uh. Oh, cheers. Hell yeah, that's same. I have a black coffee with me right now. Although Ugh, that's not conducive to speaking a whole lot. I need... I need water. I make my way to the kitchen, wash my hands, and don my apron. You're the pro the moment you enter the kitchen. That's what my grandma always tells me, and I believe it. I may be making these th these for friends, but that's no excuse to do it half-hearted. Huh. Anyone who orders a black coffee gets a nice ser serving of a fu of full city Guatemalan beans. Oh. Full city is a roasting method. Oh, please, please tell me more. Used to reduce the acidic tones of the beans to make and make them more bitter. Oh, I like that. God, please tell me more. Beans from Guatemala are typically more acidic than others, so this kind of full roast is the perfect way to balance their acidity and bitterness. Ooh, oh, I, 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 I like this. I like coffee. <laughs> I prepare the siphon before placing the flask on an alcohol lamp. The key here is making sure the flame's positioned just a touch to the side of the middle of the flask. Once it starts boiling, I shake it gently, and then wait for the beans to fall. Once they're all in the flask, it's just a matter of letting them sit until they become fragrant. We're really doing a... That... <coughs> <laughs> Naomi's comment makes me happy, but I've still got a long ways to go. My grandmother knows how to apply different brewing methods based on the bean type, for example. All I'm doing now is applying her instructions to make things easier for me. There's still plenty to learn. Oh, that's so cool! Ah. Is that it? Hold on, I have to. I have to check something. Is that a? Is that? Is that a? What was it called? Full city. Yeah, full city roast. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I'm learning things about coffee. Oh, that's that. Oh, this, oh. <clears throat> I don't know why this is getting getting me. All right. Uh, did I read this? Yeah, I did. 
Alright, next up is the Malice Ice Latte. Isn't it a cafe au lait? Eh, whatever. You make this by preparing coffee first, then adding plenty of ice into, in, into a glass before topping it off with some milk. This way, you get to see the coffee's black and the milk's white mixed together in the glass. Once that's done, I jam a straw in it and walk over to Mao with some syrup. Thanks, bunches. That does sound like a great... Yeah, anyway, uh, whatever. I make myself some coffee after that, take off my apron, wash my hands, and return to my seat. <laughs> Depending on how long this cafe's been going for and how long you've been coffee makers and like baristas or yeah, uh, your grandmother might uh, m might also have thought about her mother or grandmother too, you know. I'm just just guessing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Mao dumps half of the syrup into the cup before even giving it a taste and then pours in the remaining half. <laughs> Hearing the ice clink as she stirs it is nice and satisfying. Ah, oh, yeah, ah, oh, yeah. ちょっとだけでも開けることにしたの。コーヒーを入れるだけなら私でもできるかもって。そしたらコーヒーを入れるってのが一番大変でさ。おばあちゃんからは1ヶ月以上かかっても結局オッケーは出なかったよ。それじゃあ店が開けないから私もどうにかこうにか頑張っておばあちゃんが行く直前にギリギリ旧大店をもらったんだよねうん先輩はいつから一人でお店を開けているんですかおばあちゃんが田舎に行ったのが3月末だから私
Did I hear instant Kohi? I did, didn't I? Ooh. Loving words. Did Did uh did the words instant coffee like a Rinka? That'd be funny if it did. Please tell me it did. Please tell me Rinka's like instant co instant coffee? Oh fuck that. <laughs> Aren't these customers and students like rich? You're like, eh, it should be good enough for them. <laughs> kind of funny. I noticed Mao grinning as I finished my spiel. She probably expected me to say that. Ah, <sighs> Mao. Naomi is obviously taken aback, but she quickly starts to nod and then re and then responds. That is true. I really like how I really like how true that is when I'm trying to learn a concept and then I learn it by teaching someone else or like explaining it and it's like clicks even more for me. It's really cool how well that works. Um <laughs> now it's got me fucking pegged. Wait. Ah shit. Uh, 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 um, other thing about the last, the last, the uh, previous line. Uh, God, what was it? Oh no, I had something and I forgot what it was. And I, I really wish that there was a, a log. Oh. No? Achievement unlocked. Interesting. Load data, settings, main menu, resume, is a game, open card book, summary. Huh. I really wish there was a, like a, a, like a log of dialogue so I can go back because I don't remember what it was said. Um... When he loves to stick in a cat for others. Huh. Okay. Oh well. We're at 50 minutes in. Okay. Alright. Oh yeah, now now me games. Hell yeah. <laughs> There's a hint of concern in her expression. But she gives a conclusive response. I don't think Rinka can go to the school she's going to if she 
does her family doesn't have money or get money, right? Like, also their house. Yeah, it's it's a thing. Oh, I forgot to read. Damn it! I have to help a few customers, but they don't mind me talking with Mao and Naomi so long as they get their orders out in a timely manner. In fact, some even join in that conversation. Not just because they're regulars, but because I've known plenty of them since I was a kid. They kind of feel like relatives in a sense. That's adorable. Lionhouse has always ha has always had that homely feel to it. Both me and my grandmother consider it our second home. Isn't it right below your actual home or the grandmother? That's why I hope it stays that way once she gets back. Both Mao and Naomi leave just before 7 p.m. I head up to my room on the second floor after closing and cleaning up the shop. Let's look around. So we have a mirror. This is the... Oh, we have like a, a lamp, like an old tiny lamp. I'm gonna get this so wrong. It's not an oil, like a gas lamp. <sighs> Overgrown plants. There's, oh, there's a lot of penguins. Does she have a thing with penguins? Oh, please. Let's, oh. I hope she's obsessed with penguins. That'd be great. I'm gonna get water before we continue. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited about helping Naomi. I enjoy making coffee as it is, so it'll be nice if other people end up feeling the same. <laughs> Knowing Naomi, she'll probably pick up on it easily enough, although her clumsiness is a concern. That aside, what was that dream earlier all about? I felt okay once I started talking with Mao and Naomi, but I can't shake the feeling, the weird feeling, from when I woke up. I've never felt like that before. I can't even say for sure, but if it was actually, if I was actually dreaming, eh, eh. Oh, whoa, what's this? <laughs> <coughs> huh, what's that? In the middle of telling myself to forget about it and try to sleep, I notice a thick book on top of my desk. It's an auburn color, with some gold leaf decorations on it. I assume these are gears. Seems like the kind of book my grandmother would like, but I don't remember putting it here. Well, okay, let's have a look or better not mess with it. Uh, I mean... This looks like plot, so let's fucking go. Let's fucking plot. I take care when cracking it open, trying not to get it dirty. What the? Oh, wait. <laughs> I read a voice line. I forget to read description lines. I talk over voice lines. It's a whole thing. There are no pages inside. Rather, there's a rectangular gap in the middle. I close the book immediately, having more questions now than when I spied it. <laughs> Might as well message Grant about it tomorrow, considering it's already this late. <laughs> oh! My phone vibrates after I turn the lights off and hop into bed. It's a message from Naomi. <coughs> I send a quick emoji in response and then place my phone beside my pillow without checking to see if she reads it or not. <laughs> huh? Oh, five, two. Wait. April. It, May 2nd. Okay. So it wasn't late April, it was early May. I'm pretty sure I've fallen asleep, but I feel conscious. Except, I can't move my body. 
or even speak. Oh, these are cool. These clock diagrams upon clock di upon a clock diagram is ooh. This is cool. Is this sleep paralysis? Or maybe it's a lucid dream. Yeah. All right. I hear a man's voice, but I don't know to whom it belongs. A figure appears soon after, but I can't make it out at all, all that well. It's someone slender with a vaguely androgynous face. I can't respond, so I wait for him to continue. Okay. Alright. ふ。悲観することはないよ。なぜなら君にはこれから12週間再び生きることのできるチャンスが与えられているからね。普通じゃないよね。そう。その通りさ。オッケー。けれど、君が特別なんじゃない。特別なのは君の持つ運命だよ
I don't know where it usually goes to hang out, but it isn't causing any trouble here, and it knows when where to do its business. My gran always said that trying to keep a cat caged is about as pointless as trying to catch clouds. In other words, she's had her fair share of trouble with it as well. Uh... I have myself a good stretch before I get ready to open the store. Today's a holiday, so it needs to be open nice and early. May 3rd? Just as I think I can relax a bit after the morning customers left, the bell in the door chimes. Oh, we get to meet Miharu. Alright. Hey! Huh. Anne trots a tall and stylish girl with matching looks. The sun reflects off her long, silky hair. Enough to make it seem like she's generating her own light with each and every step. She's also not popular? <clears throat> That's Mishima Miharu for you. She's a classmate of mine and a part of our to be avoided group. But in her case, it's more because she's practically perfect in every regard, so people find it hard to approach her. Ah! Okay. Whew. Ah, I should have figured, considering she's wear wearing her Sugili uniform. She normally wears her own clothes when we're out in public, but I guess she can't be bothered to pick up something out to wear for work. Helps her to avoid getting hit on by guys on the way home, too. Not sure how that works exactly, but eh. Hey. Thing is, she works way out in Akihabara. This is by Shinjuku, pretty much the opposite of town. So why did she go out of her, out of her way to come here? Does she need something? She's gay! Okay, <laughs> that's really gay, actually. <laughs> I came by to see your face. Wow. Wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have to admit, there are certain facets of Miharu that I just don't get. Lesbian. <laughs> <coughs> the facet you don't get is that she's gay. I'm pretty confident she has some other business out here, yet here she is teasing me. It's hard to find the right response sometimes. I wish I had a webcam. Oh, <laughs> oh God. It's not about them. <laughs> Which is... <coughs> we'll just take... We'll just change topic. Or, kind of. There's a park across from here that's famous all over the country. Apparently it was an old samurai's garden that became a park after being used as a zone for experimental agriculture projects. Not only does it have all sorts of flowers from here, England and France, but there's also plenty of tourists who come by to see it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're a bit out of the way to draw them in as customers, but a couple of foreigners do find us to stop by every now and again. We have a good view from it, uh, a good view of it from here, although I don't think it's the kind of thing you can enjoy for long. Miharu has some peculiar tastes, though. Like, <laughs> so who knows? Maybe she can. Okay. 
Oh, she's tall too. Huh. Hmm. I don't think we got to see how tall Mao is against Rinka. Or compared to against uh, compared to Rinka. Oh, they even have a Yaksuko. <laughs> Stardust Kingdom on the 5th. What day is it? Whoops. The 3rd. So Saturday. The morning after a nightmare. Okay, uh, resume. Stardust Kingdom's a famous theme park out in the Chiba Prefecture. Oh, so a date? <laughs> We've made plans to go there at the end of Golden Week. Fully aware that it'd be it. Fully aware that I'd, it'd be at its busiest. Just say bye bye. Come on. Miharu leaves with a smile on her face. God, if I had a camera, I would look at it, look straight into it. <laughs> I had to stop myself uh, from saying bye because Miharu isn't fond of people saying that whenever they part ways. Okay, that's. Okay, that's fair. I get where she's coming from. It sounds like what you'd say for a long-term parting, but I think she's going a little overboard. Either way, I try to keep myself from using it when I can. Just as I'm planning to brew some coffee for myself, someone else makes their way through the door. Oh, Naomi is adorable. The dress, the floral print, I like the design, and the color. The color scheme. That's good. That's really good. In comes another friend. Can't say I'm surprised by her cute outfit choice. God, we have the same tastes! Love that. The fact that she didn't mention Miharu must mean they didn't cross paths. Do they mention each other a lot? Naomi seems a little down, though. Not only that, but I can tell she had second thoughts about coming inside. Either because there, there weren't any other customers, or she's conscious of the fact that I'm trying to run a business. Or Miharu. Huh. Rival Rivals in a romance, let's go. <laughs> I still haven't asked my gran about an easy way for beginners to make some relatively good coffee, so hopefully she hasn't come to ask about that. I have the option of teaching her myself, but I'd rather not do that with my own relative lack of knowledge. Not sure why I asked when she never set foot in my room. I was thinking that. I decided not to mention. Uh, so obviously she wouldn't have left anything there. <coughs> Turns out it is her pencil case. She could have just sent me a message about it last night, but apparently she only noticed it was gone this morning. She lives here in the Shinjuku area, so she decided to take a walk and drop by to pick it up. 
<laughs> well, that settles that. It's so not me to do something like this, though. She jumps back to a topic I'm not expecting. I have any customers right now, and the street's fairly empty. I make my way up the stairs to get it. <coughs> An auburn cover with gold leaf decorations. I can tell Naomi's impressed, judged by the hushed noises she's making while examining the cover. Ooh, ah, oh, a oh, whoa? I wonder if... Okay. Her inquisitive look shifts to a confused expression upon opening it. It ain't even a book. Can't blame her. There are any real pages. It's a big rectangular hole in the middle. Sakura? <laughs> <laughs> catch you, catch you, catch me, catch me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious. Oh, speaking of your grand, did you get that, uh, that, 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 those lessons that you promised? It's no regular book, at least. I'd feel bad if we uncovered something she's been wanting to keep secret. That's why it's best to ask before we pry any further. She has a point, but I'm curious. Naomi's hands fly off the book almost immediately after I say that. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that she, the character model model. Uh, character sprite. Oh, fuck. What's the word? Uh is now lower she's like crouching down and is now either at level or slightly shorter than rinka uh like having your uh yeah yeah anyway uh <sighs> You could tell she was entranced by it. I guess a book like this would fascinate anyone who's in, who's as into books as her. Oh, who is this? 
As soon as those words fall out of my mouth, someone new walks through the door. An actual customer. She's got a style. Not one of the regulars, though. A woman with a suitcase. Likely a tourist from abroad. She ends up asking where her, her hotel is, which is apparently closer to Shinjuku. I end up tell telling her that she's come a bit too far out. Apparently, she's come to Japan alone to tour with all the famous temples, but she but is in a bit of a pinch since she can't understand the language. Once I tell her where to go, she thanks me and goes on her way. <laughs> she doesn't order anything, but she is kind enough that I can forgive her. Okay. Oh. Naomi can't contain her excitement after the woman leaves. <laughs> Wait, is this magic? Now nah, I'm the one who's surprised. Oh, what? Oh? oh? We were speaking English? It felt as natural as any other conversation to me. And again, she did mention that she didn't understand Japanese. There's no way she'd say that if we were if we had such a fluent conversation. I was also thinking that, but I felt it was like too nitpicky. <laughs> mm. Yeah, what? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. After putting the book upstairs, I return with one of my English textbooks. She throws some questions at me like I ask, and lo and behold, I can barely answer them. She tries to be as polite as possible with pointing out my inadequacy. Funnily enough, she didn't even have to look back to the textbook for the last few questions. It's worth noting that while studying isn't exactly my forte, English is, is a subject I struggle with more than others. I felt like I was having a regular conversation, so if anything, I am more dubious about whether or not Naomi's right. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Uh, um... Uh... <laughs> hmm. I doubt anything will come from thinking it over for now, so I'll pay more attention the next time a foreigner comes along. The smile on her face is almost blinding as she speaks. I can feel my cheeks warming to a bright red. It's hard to describe the happiness those words instill with me with. It might actually be the first time anyone said that to me, considering I mainly serve regulars. They typically compare me to my gran, which isn't all bad, but they've never praised me as an individual. Uh, that's why I can't help but be taken aback by what she said. Enough so that I struggle to give her a proper response, let alone thank her for it. I make some coffee for her, and she sips on it while we're eating a book. As she does that, I either handle orders for customers or clear up the tableware. Once an hour has passed, Naomi gets her things together and comes over to the register. 
I feel bad taking money from a junior, but she seems satisfied enough. Wait, so it's Sunday? I thought... Menu. Uh... Yeah, it's 3. Thursday. Friday 4. Saturday 5. Wasn't it the 5th of May that... Miharu wanted to go to the Stardust Kingdom? Interesting. Alright, well, whatever. Uh... <laughs> <Are you? laughs> I love Rinka's obliviousness. I'm not quite sure why she's acting so reserved in regards to Miharu, but at least she's willing to join us. I get back to work after seeing her off. First thing I do once I return to my room at the end of the day is message my gran. Seems like she's willing to think up a recipe for us. The book doesn't ring any bells for her though. Seems like there are several books here with similar bindings, but there are just plain old books. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious about them, but that isn't enough to make me want to search through my grand's room. Oh wait, is this her grandmother's room? Is her grandmother obsessed with penguins? I I want to know about the penguins so bad. It's just like a shelf of penguins of varying sizes. It's fantastic. I want to know more. <laughs> I can sell it! I need to figure out what to do with this one. Well, selling it just sounds like I'm avoiding the plot. I don't know what the hell what that that would do. Oh, I definitely want want to um do a replay and uh, and see what selling it does because that's hilarious. I'm absolutely taking a look inside. I'm too curious. Actually. I'm low on water. I'm going to refill my water bottle and be back in a minute. Um, let me just put it into chat. Because I also don't know. I know you can, like, change the screen to, like, a we'll be right back page or screen or whatever. But I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to put it into the chat and... Okay. I'll be right back.
And we're back. Take a look inside. Actually, Naomi did mention that there are some cards inside. Might as well have a look. I flipped the buck over, dropping the cards out. Well, be a little bit more careful. <laughs> Four in total. All of a pattern similar to the book's cover. Turning them over to their fronts, I noticed something written on their white background. But the writing itself is in English, but I can read it perfectly fine for some reason. I name Shishim uh Shishimayurinka Name Federico Carminati Cause of Death Fire Regret Gold Medal Worm. I can't help but ask out loud. I'm not too sure what the other cards are about, but it's easy to imagine that's nothing good when a, a cause of death and regrets are mentioned. Gold medal. There's probably a whole bunch of them considering the numbers. Enough to fill up an entire hole in- Oh, only four of the cards dropped out. Okay. Uh, enough to fill up the entire hole in the book, I guess. When did all the car other cards disappear, though? More importantly, why was this book on my disc in the first place? I scour the internet as well, but nothing relevant comes up. Selling the book isn't an option now. I put the cards back inside before placing the book on my shipbook shelf. It's probably worth showing Naomi whenever she's here next. Two pairs of eyes are better than one after all. It's good you're not keeping this a secret. I mean, you can't really because she knows about it, but eh eh. Oh? I whip my phone out and send her a message about Naomi joining us for Stardust for Kingdom, to which she replies almost immediately. Huh. <coughs> We're getting the squad together! While a bit odd for a response, she has said that there's no issue with Naomi joining us. <laughs> she emphasizes that I shouldn't get in touch with Miharu, though. My god. While a bit suspicious, Mao's usually the one who gets stuff sorted out, so I don't pay it much mind. I'd rather think about the fun theme park experience waiting for us in a few days. Yeah. The store will be open tomorrow, as per usual, so I make my way to bed nice and early. Meanwhile, I stream at 1am. <laughs> One hour after the park opens, we finally pass through the hellish queue to get in. We came an hour early, so, but it turns out others came even earlier than that. <laughs> Well, at least we didn't have to wait in line for tickets, thanks to asking Mao to pick them up beforehand. Still, we totally underestimated how busy it'd be during Golden Week. Yeah. So it turns out that drinking lots of water so, so that I could speak a lot and say those, these lines uh, means I have to go to the bathroom now. So I'll be right back again. <laughs> Let me just... Be back in a bit.
I'm back. I was just thinking uh, that it, it doesn't entirely seem that Mao is actually interested in us, but it would be so funny that, like, Miharu and Naomi are both definitely absolutely 100% into us, but then I, Rinka, just like, uh, no, I'm into Mao. <laughs> I think that would be funny. She doesn't even wait for a response before snapping some pictures. Some with me, some with Miharu, some just by herself. Oh, she came prepared! Yeah, I'll bet. Oh, wait, that's- oh, wait, that outfit. Hold on. Wait, that outfit. Hold on. I forgot to look at the outfits. I like Miharu's. Sorry, I was, uh... Being gay for a, like a like a like a hot minute there. <laughs> Where's Naomi? Oh man, Mao ships it. Is she even romanceable? God, I hope she is. Please. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, Naomi is so. Awkward. Naomi tries to hide her bewilderment through awkward laughter. Sorry, I was thinking about a meme. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Could you be any more obvious to everyone besides Rinka? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more with the attract- I, I, I like attractions at theme parks. I don't really like- well, I don't like buying things. <laughs> it's a- uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, Naomi. Aw. Looks like Naomi's decided to just go with the flow. Can't blame her either. Pitching an idiot to this group is kind of difficult. At a certain height, those things fucking terrify me. I don't like them. <laughs> she has a point. I wonder if Matt watches Defunct Land. <laughs> or would like Defunct Land. Oh, are they talking about how theme park. And I mentioned Defunct Land. And then you can spend the uh, spend this hour to do uh, to to go shopping and get some trinkets. Yeah. Wait. Oh, is, wait. Hold on. Is this a new outfit for Rinka? I didn't even realize. I like this one too. It is cute. Just noticing things. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 
And with that, we make our way over to the ticket machine. I can feel myself getting excited about how fun today will be. The sky is pitch black when closing time looms near, allowing all the fancy illuminations to light up the park. Ah. I was kind of looking forward to saying all my opinions of various types of uh, theme park rides, but I guess I just was a only able to say that I, I don't like Free Falls. Well, I don't like Free Falls that I can see how far I'm going down. I think the Tower of Terror is... Oh, is this still the Tower of Terror? It's not, is it? Ugh. Um, the Tower of Terror is good because I don't know how tall it is. And I, and I can't see. So, it, it, it's just sort of just fun instead of terrifying. Anyway, let's, uh, did I read this? I think I did. Whatever. Me and Miharu take a rest on one of the benches near the entrance, since Mao and Naomi split off on us to buy something they forgot to get earlier. Oh! Oh, okay. Alright, Miharu, it's your chance. Shoot your shot, let's go. Fucking woo me. <sighs> Hardly surprising, considering we're at a theme park on a holiday. Oh my, I didn't realize she's blushing. <laughs> Still, it feels awkward sitting on people who are openly flirting with each other. Well, maybe you should start flirting with each other. Ah, just a thought. I try to get up so we can move elsewhere, but Miharu grabs into my sleeve and stops me. It's like I'm the romanceable character here. Oh my god, I am. Uh, I had to get up from my seat, but I'm still connected by my headphones. I almost. that. Oh, what do I do? Uh, do I indulge? Or do I wait for an opportunity with someone else? Uh, God. <sighs> this isn't gonna. I, I, I'm pretty sure going along with it for now isn't going to. lock me in to a route. Right? Right? Uh. Honestly, I would just, I would just go along with it. I, I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go with how I think I would respond. And I think I would just be like, oh, okay, then. Yeah. Uh-huh. <coughs> it's not often that she wears such a shy expression, either. God. She's normally a lot more outspoken, but something seems to be on her mind right now. God. Soon after, people start to gather around us to see the impending parade. Seems like we've picked a pretty good spot by coincidence, judging by the number of onlookers. The only issue is that it'd be hard to meet back up with Mao and Naomi if it gets anywhere packed, so I try to move again. Miharu maintains her refusal to let go of my sleeve, though, and I fail to find the words to make her stop. God. Ugh. The silence between us continues. This isn't normal. 
people tend to get the wrong impression about her, since she rarely talks to anyone other than us, but she actually has a great sense of humor. She enjoys talking about the most meaningless stuff too. And yet, here we sit in utter silence. She looks looking a bit shy, but there's determination in her expression as well, so I can't bring myself to say anything. The park staff sets up barricades near the bench during this time to make sure no one gets in the way of the parade before they start to organize people into lines. Need water. <coughs> we could just stay seated, but doing so while the rest of the crowd waits around all excited feels too awkward. We speak at the same time, possibly because we're thinking the same thing. Oh. God, she's so fucking nervous. Oh. Her only response to me is a smile. Back to an awkward silence. The only difference is that she has a downcast expression now, which morphs into one of worry, but then the hint of determination returns. Yep, yep, yep. Resolve. I move forward in my seat. As soon as she starts, the people around us begin to cheer. Immediately after, all the park illuminations go dark, which signals the start of some lively music. The sheer amount of noise coming from the parade makes it impossible for us to talk while it's going on. <laughs> Regardless, just seeing it is enough for me. It's one of those things you can just sit back and appreciate. The parade comes to an end about a, ha a half hour later. Part of me is still entranced, even after the park illumination sparked back on. Once most of the people who've come to see it move on, I tell Miharu that we should go too. She slowly loosens her grip on my sleeve before standing. I want to think that Mao and Naomi split up uh, on purpose because Miharu asked them to let me leave her alone with Rinka. And because, you know, they're totally bros, they, they, they did it, but... Mm. Well, Mao is, but, and Naomi is like, oh, damn it, sure, fine. <sighs> Poor Naomi. She says this with a dramatically different tone of voice. Keep you going? Wait, what does that mean? <sighs> I make sure to emphasize that we should all go. Shh. 
she replies with one clear, simple word. So clear, in fact, it makes me it, that it worries me a little. Normally, you wouldn't be so firm about planning a night out with friends. Yeah, next time, definitely. I'll confess, definitely next time. You can do this, Miharu. You can do this. My phone vibrates. Mao has just sent me a message. And when I turn around upon reading it, both her and Naomi are walking towards us. <coughs> You'll get her next time. Oh god, she's so... Uh... Missed chances. That face! Look at that! Oh my god! Oh my- like, oh my god! <laughs> We've composed ourselves? We're fine? Everything's fine? I wave to the two of them over after she says that. The first thing I do when I get home is take a good shower. Today has been absolutely exhausting, so my body insists that I drive straight into bed afterwards. Or dive. I'm not exactly rolling in money, so I couldn't buy much, but I did come home with something precious. I'm sure I don't need to say what that what it is either. My gran even gets back to me about relatively cheap and tasty beans, as well as a way for beginners to make some de decent drip coffee. School's back in session tomorrow as well, so I need to make sure I teach Naomi properly. Once I hop into bed, my eyes are drawn to a certain book on my bookshelf. I still haven't told Naomi about the card inside. I should do that when she comes over to learn the coffee brewing technique. I want to know the coffee brewing technique. Oh, I wonder if I could do that. There are so many, like... There's so many things that are like, oh, I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to make preserves. I want to know how to learn to make coffee. I want to learn how to make cheese. Ooh, there's so many things. Okay, anyway. Did I read that? Whatever. I find myself repeating the same thing I said a few moments ago. We're still a ways off from the fireworks display in August. But I'm already looking forward to it. There's no doubt we'll do plenty of other stuff before that, too. That- this just seems like we're not going to. This just seems something like something tragic's gonna happen. So I figure, anyway, I still have no idea what's in store for me. I never even cons- I never even consider the possibility of my daily life being disrupted by something far beyond my imagination. Kill come on, come on, don't. Don't do this to me. Don't fucking do this to me. Morning already? Doesn't feel like I've been asleep for very long. But that might just be because I was so exhausted last night. Hello? <laughs> I am wrong. I haven't woken up. This is the same thing that's been happening to me these last few days. I'm still asleep, and yet conscious for some reason. Slowly, but surely, I open my eyes. Ooh! This is cool! Ooh. The sight that greets me is one that I could have ne never imagined. A number of gears float amidst infinite darkness. I gaze up and notice a faint ray of light piercing said darkness. Then it finally registers that I'm not standing up. That I'm standing up, not lying down. I find myself on a circular platform about three meters in diameter. A witness stand, like when you'd see it in court, is attached to the platform. I have only ever seen one of these one in the news and on TV shows. Give me a sec. Even more baffling is that this platform seems to be floating. It's attached to a much larger circle. 
but floats independently of it. This is just one of twelve platforms, by my count, all of which are arranged with a cir uh, with, with a, within a large circular pattern, like a clock's face. As if in support of this analogy, the platform on which I stand is labeled with a Roman numeral, one. In the center of these uh, of these concentric circles are massive clock hands slowly ticking away. <coughs> oh, what the hell? Oh, where is this? Wait, I said a voice on again. Whoops. Oh, hi. Hi, Miharu. I inhale sharply the moment I hear that voice. The platform beside me, which would be Roman numeral 2, has none other than Miharu standing on it. <laughs> okay. Oh, hello. Wait. No. A voice I don't recognize stops me. I look in the direction from which it comes, only to see a small girl with white hair. Unlike the rest of us, she isn't standing on a circular platform. She is walking around on nothing at all. She takes another step forward, stopping on the subsection attaching our platforms together. The hem of her skirt flutters up slightly, which reveals her slender thighs. But, okay. Her hair is as fluffy as her clothes, the latter of which resembles the attire worn by a foreign noble. The hat nestled on her tiny head is, head is uh, kind of cute, too. Yeah, it is. Well, what does Tide do? Oh. Oh, so we can see the whole- okay. Our eyes meet as we turn to face one another. I could have done that with- Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, so did um Miharu also die? And it was brought back, and they're one of twelve. Okay, so the fatal twelve are the ones whose fates ended, who died, but are back now for some reason. Ooh. Okay. That's my guess. But he was the purple or blue colored guy, hair colored guy. What was his deal? <laughs> oh, come on. Also, is it Parsa or Parka? Uh, I'm gonna go with Parsa. <laughs> she says again, obviously unimpressed. Her attitude toward me, despite being visibly younger, makes me want to keep interrupting her. Yeah, this is important. God, we're almost out of time. Uh, but I only stopped the streams to go eat lunch, so I can get a little bit further. Or I can go a little bit further. But I am starting to get hungry. I can push through, though. She makes her way along a clock hand to the center of the clock face. She continues her explanation mid-step, her tone as elegant as they come. Oh, 
しく持つ方々がおのおのに死の運命を回避するための意識ですか、hmm. okay. 先ほども申し上げましたが私は運命の女神パルカ。Oh, it is Parka. Okay, yeah, I heard Paduka, so it is Parka, but that is sounds like the like clothing thing. So, Paduka. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Paduka. She reaches the center of the clock by the time she finishes her self introduction. She then stands tall, pinches her skirt, and bobs a curtsy to us before continuing, continuing her explanation. Just to be fancy, I guess. <coughs> hmm. Oh, oh! Oh, yes, I love that shit. Oh! Could at the same moment in time? How? What? Oh, okay, so they were supposed to do the r i n a l selection, but then something got in the way. So. What got in the way? Something stopping this? But for what? For nefarious purposes? Or, be, or is this nefarious in the. Ah, but death! Ah, let's go. Or is something. Or is this, like, expected? The juncture of causality. Okay. <laughs> Call it whatever you want, but I'm struggling to keep up. If what she's saying is true, then. Me and Mahiru, uh, Miharu, Mahiru, uh, uh, not, not to mention the others here, we're dead. That can't be right, though. I've been living my life normally until now. So, am I a ghost?、Uh, that makes even less sense. Confused though I may be, I, li I listen to what this girl has to say. Is this why we can meet? We can meet here in the dream? <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I am obscure, unseen in the dream. <laughs> That's not a fucking hell. <laughs> yep. Function sick with our tall. I was saying quite a fate, Lori Stratum. Oh, is this? Huh. Okay, yeah, I can dig it. I take in my surroundings. No walls, no ceiling. Calling this place a court does feel fitting considering how odd it is. Giving something a name. Oh, okay. Oh, is that that blue haired guy? The blue haired.、Eh. Light, light. He was cute. Hmm. 
A man's voice cuts in as if to silence Paruka. The voice originally, uh, a voice originated from the platform to my right, emblazoned with the Roman numeral, numeral, uh, okay, X is 10, okay, 12, oh, right, the clock, 1, it goes to 12, okay, damn, damn it, uh. okay, this is a new person. The man standing there has brown skin, he's tall and muscular, with a hardened face, I assume he's from the Middle East. Actually, wait a minute. Isn't it odd that both Paruka and this guy can speak Japanese? Why didn't I realize that sooner? Everyone sounded it, sounded it so natural that the thought never crossed my mind. She gives a stern yet composed warning. No! Uh... Go! Oh, it's a death game! God damn it, it's a death game! Uh. <coughs> huh? How I remember it's eliminated. a sharp glance before continuing to speak. Much as I'd rather not, it's hard to feign ignorance after hearing her explain things this much. Ugh. <laughs> How uncouth that would be. <laughs> I mean, but you're still conscious and aware of your own existence. That's still pretty much killing. I mean, come on. Or letting die. Oh, the fact that Miharu is here is just fucked up. <sighs> Miharu and I aren't the only ones to react either. The others have their own thoughts to share on the matter too. Paraka's voice, along with the, all, all of ours, resounds throughout the courts so we can hear each other speak. I don't have it in me to take a good look at all the others gathered. My eyes are glued to the person on the platform. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that's a five. One after five. Six. She sits in the field position. This is going to kill me. I might actually learn how Norman numerals work after this. She sits in the fetal position, lifeless, almost as if she's asleep. I go back to f focusing on Paruka after that in an attempt to take my mind off the uneasiness welling up in me. I can decide whether or not she to believe this after she finishes. Yeah, the name is the present. It, it it sticks with you. It's the present. Cause of death that happened in the past, because they all already died. And the regret is the future because they wanted to do something and didn't get a chance to. It's the future. Okay, I really like that. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh, you have to figure out their whole deal. I have Shishimarinka, Federica Carminati, I have Fire, and I have Gold Metal. So this is the stuff I have, the information I have on me. I have my own name, I have someone else's name, which is... That. I have Fire, but is this my cause of death, or was is Bomb my cause of death? I'm not sure. And then regret, I don't know about any gold medal. That feels like something for someone else, not me. Okay, that's uh. I cast my eyes downward as she mentions the book. What I initially thought was some kind of handrail is actually a book stand. Resting upon it is a single book. An auburn colored cover with gold leaf gears decorating it. I open it up only to discover that it's identical to the one at Lion House. A bright light pours from it all of a sudden. I close my eyes on instinct and slowly open them again when I notice the light gradually fading away. What greets me now are four cards, one lined up beside another, flo floating above the book itself. That's why you don't say your name to another person. It's, n it's numeral whatever, because the name is one of the things that you find out to kill to eliminate one name Shishimairinka three name Federico Carminati F uh, four cause of death fire oh, uh, nine regret gold medal each card has its own details written on them only one card has my information on it though maybe that's thanks to my memory being fuzzy the other three have information on the others so four total I catch myself peeking at Miharu, but I can't say anything due to the light pouring from her book. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Miharu gives a concise explanation of her discovery. She must have noticed me looking over at her. Meanwhile, Paruka pays us no mind, opting instead to continue her explanation. continues her explanation to proclaim that if both reveal a personal card, 
they were acquired to reveal another. If both of our If both parties reveal all three cards, a stalemate occurs, which results in all other participants receiving their information and running the risk of being elected. Nothing more. We only have three pieces of information, so revealing just one is risky enough. Conversely, if you refuse to f reveal a personal card, then you'll be eliminated. I've only got one personal card. What's up with that? Potika moves on before I can ask. Uh. Oh, this is too much. Oh, this is so much. Okay, yeah. Oh. This is stressful. Hearing ex her explain all that makes me realize the meaning behind these cards. I ended up I ended up dying at some point without realizing it, and now I'm being forced to take part in this ordeal. It's why I was given these cards. She calls it... Divine Selection, but this whole thing, collecting cards and eliminating others, it's practically a game. A game with their futures at stake. Gathering information on complete strangers is an easy task, but so long as you can manage that, then... Uh. Oh, because I don't know. Ah. Oh. Just have to survive. I'm gonna be so bad at this. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> she makes it clear she has nothing else to add. I try to interject, but she ignores me. A grin flashes across Parker's face in response. I have to go to the bathroom again. I will be right back. Um, I was trying to hold it because we're almost done and I want to like get this scene over with before I stop but um but yeah uh but I, I, I can't let's I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I'll be back in a I'll be back in a bit
let's get going. But others have three personal cards and I only have one, right? Is that what I'm getting? Is that what? Mihara closes her book when she noticed Paruka is about to continue her explanation. I try to close mine, but it it forces itself back open until the cards can make their way back their way back inside. After they have, I can close it just fine. Seeing real objects behave like a smartphone app is a bit weird. I do not have information. Okay. Looks like there's a proper procedure for all this. First, everyone has to decide if they want to elect someone. And once they made that choice, the election itself begins. I could tell that the rules she's explaining are vital, so I tried my best to keep up just by my persistent confusion. God, girl, same. I have no idea what's going on. I am so scared. <laughs> ah. Oh, there's, oh, okay. Do we get their information? Oh, one of the cards. The same voice that interrupted her earlier speaks out again. Oh! You! Huh. The man clearly has no sympathy for the woman pleading with him. In fact, he seems to feel nothing at all, much like Paruka. <sighs> I can't recall much of what happens next. Once the man... The man on platform... Uh, 12. Elects the woman on platform... 6. They are both raised upwards and out of sight. And not long after, platform 12 descends with the man on it. I assume it means that he has all three of her cards and has succeeded in eliminating her. After he returns, I think he shows a card to Parka and claims it is the name of Numeral. Eight. Having to say which card you'd take is probably what she would have explained if he hadn't interrupted her earlier. Okay, so, so now we know that he knows Eight's name. Is that reflected in the cards? Uh, okay, I just have mine. Uh, 
Which means everyone else gets to know the card you claimed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know. Oh, I didn't choose whether to eliminate or not. I mean, I would have chosen not to do anything, but, like, it might have been interesting to see if I chose to eliminate someone and then just fucking died immediately. I don't know. Eh. My consciousness begins to fade when she says that. The cessation is similar to when you start falling asleep. My train of thought is completely stopped at that point, though. Not a single thing about it. First week. The most accurate way to describe how I felt when I woke up this morning would probably be melancholic. Ugh. All right, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, thank you for joining me on this extra long stream. Only about half an hour longer, but I really do need to go eat lunch. And that seems like a good stopping point. The BGM is called Powerless. Yeah, it certainly feels that way, huh? Huh. <sighs> Um, but yeah, I am super intrigued by this game's story. Um, I, I am not confident at all in my abilities to actually be able to play the, play the actual game part. I hope that I'm, you're gone. You, uh, huh. What was I saying? <laughs> yeah, um... Huh. <sighs> huh, I'm noticing Mao isn't in here. Um, we got Paruka, Rinka, Miharu, and Naomi. Wonder. So anyway, um, I'm really looking. I'm looking forward to tonight's stream when we continue with Fatal Twelve. Um, ooh, ooh. <sighs> I'm just trying to process. I, oh, I like this game a lot so far. It's really good. Um, I noticed a few typos in the English, but, like, who gives a shit about that, honestly? So, anyway, um, how do I do my out outros again? Um, this has been Fatal 12, I have been Calypso, I came in Carousel, and I'm signing off. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day.